Um, Frances started the American Friends Service Committee in 1968 when she was 49 years old. Right. Which the, that's the striking statistic to me. Um, but we're here not to celebrate just Francis, but everybody um, who has worked or for the American Friends Service Committee, um, whether it's Joe Comerford or Maya Winfrey or Doug Rennick or any of those people here. There's Doug. There's Doug. I think Joe and Maya will be along later. Um, but also especially Arky Markham, um, who worked with Francis in the very beginning uh, and is one of the co-creators of the annual Martin Luther King Day that we have every year. Um, so, really, this is sort of a non-related family reunion that we have going here. You all have been working with AMC for, for some time. Um, speaking of Martin Luther King Day, in the sign-up sheet, if you're interested in being on this year's 2014 uh, Martin Luther King Day Committee, um, then please just sign your name and check that off. Uh, it's never too late, as I've found out being here almost five years, it's never too late to start planning for MLK. Um, so we're going to be hearing from many people who have been working with AMSC throughout the years. Um, in between speakers, uh, we will be seeing a slideshow of some pictures over the past 20, 15 to 20 years. Um, and, uh, and after that, we're actually going to be playing silently uh, the Testimonial Project, which is a recent production of the American Friends Service Committee in conjunction with NCTV and Just Communities. Um, it's the story of, of undocumented folks who live in Springfield. Um, so we're going to be bringing up a bunch of people at a time, then we're going to go back to talking amongst ourselves because this is a community event and we are a community and we have lots of food to eat. Um, and um, that's pretty much it. I want to thank all of the restaurants and the shops that contributed. People who have been helping me to uh, arrange this over the past two weeks. I uh, can attest to the franticness that I had um, around the food. Uh, and now I, I realize we have way too much food. Uh, but I want to name them all because they were very generous. Bella. Northampton Brewery, Paul and Elizabeth, Viva Fresh Pasta, Hungry Ghost, River Valley Market, The Great Wall, Provisions, Sylvester's, Deals and Steals, Papa Gino's, Papa Gino's, don't eat 10 pizzas, uh, Amanu's, State Street Deli, Webster's, Fish Hook, The Cup and Top, Mosaic, Cereals Market, Cafe Evolution, Sam's Pizza, and Big Y. Um, so those are the or, or shops that are providing the copious and delicious food that's that's happening here. Um, I'm, we're going to set up some more chairs around the room. Oh, there's like an audience section over here. Um, but first, I'm going to introduce the, the first speaker, somebody who has been working with AMC for quite some time. She really hasn't stopped. And it is her birthday today. So as we invite her up, Hockey Wheeland, we are going to sing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday. Happy birthday, dear Pocky. Happy birthday to you. So I'll put on a different hat now. <laughs> um, I, I want to just share a couple of things from a long time ago. Jeff said I never did stop. Well, I did, but that's another story. <laughs> what, what happened was, and it's another long story. In 1968, I made my first visit to the valley, and the people I was with took me to Mount Toby Friends. And I met Francis Crow then, and uh, except for all these ins and outs over the past 45 years, uh, she might not remember it, and I might not remember it either. But. In 1972, in the spring of 1972, I was in Harrisburg for the trial of a number of wonderful people, including our own um, local Ekbal, who later went on to teach at Hampshire College, and uh, Daniel and Phil Berrigan, Elizabeth McAllister, and a number of people who were on trial there for uh, plotting to 
bomb to put bombs in the heating systems of God knows what in Washington and imagine to kidnap Henry Kissinger. I mean, who dreamt this up? You know, it's a very bad dream. But anyway, the good news was there were a lot of us from all over who were there, and among them was Francis Crow from here. And, uh, and we were looking for a place to live. And she, and I don't know if any of you remember Judith Lefemina, those are the, the two people I most remember who were in Harrisburg at that time. And they said, well, come to Western Mass. And I said, well, what's the town? What's the city? And they said, it's Western Mass. <laughs> and uh, for all of us who live and love being in Western Mass, you know what, what they were talking about. And so I did. And, um, and then I started working with Frank Dorman, who many of you may remember, who, uh, who just passed away this past year. Um, we worked with clergy and laity concerned. There was a, a national anti-war group that worked very closely with Francis and the American Friends Service Committee. And uh, so I really got to know her well then. And was, of course, as many of you here, how many of you were recruited by Francis to do some volunteer work for the American Friends Service Committee? So, so you know the drill. Uh, Francis had the plan. She needed the people power. and. We provided it, so um, so that was the beginning of that story. And she connected me with wonderful people in the Cambridge office, and I really got to know the peace movement in ways that uh, that that really make it so dear and so much a part of me. So here we are, 45 years later, 23 years later, and uh, and the American Friends Service Committee is still going strong. So. Uh, Thank you, Francis. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Maya. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Jeff. And all of us, because without us, there wouldn't be a Western Mass AFS. <laughs> <laughs> Is now a good time? Sure. All right. We're going to sing a song that you may or may not know, but you'll know it soon. And uh, so we'll uh, sing it together to Francis and to Arky. Is Arky here? Arky's not here she yet. She will be. She will be. Okay. We will sing this together to Francis. It's a zipper song, so one word changes each time. May the work I have done speak for me. How perfect is that? Perfect. Okay. Here we go. May the work I have done speak for me and may the work I have done speak for me and if I should lose sight of my goal well someone else will come and take a hold may the work I have done speak for me I have to bring it down and may the work I have done speak for me and may the work I have done speak for me if I should lose sight, and if I should lose sight of my goal, well, someone else will come and take a hold. May the work I have done speak for me, and may the love I have shared, and may the love I have shared speak for me, and may the love I have shared speak for me. And if I should lose sight, Someone else will come and take a hold. May the love I have shared speak for me. And may the truth I have told, and may the truth I have told speak for me. This is for you. And may the truth I have told speak for me. Here you are, my choir. And if I should lose sight of my goal, well, someone else will come and take a hold. May the truth I have told speak for me. Make the songs I have sung, and may the songs I have sung speak for me. And may the songs I have sung speak for me. Someone else will come and take the hope. May the songs I have sung speak for me, and may the work I have done, and may the work I have done speak for me. This is for Francis. And may the work I have done speak for me. And if I should lose sight of my goal, 
or someone else will come and take a hold. May the work I have done speak for me. We're closing. And may the work I have done speak for me. Well, mostly I want to speak about Ruth, whom a lot of you know, and who tends to hide her light under the bushel. But we came here in 1961, and Ruth was president of the Women's International League, the local Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, uh, very shortly after we came, and uh, has worked with Francis and Packy and the rest of them for many years on the vigil and in AFSC and more than I really want to uh, take the time to recount. Perhaps the single most thing that I would talk about though is her work with Guatemalan refugees. Back in Oh, 19, 1980, I guess, maybe, uh, Mount Toby uh, declared itself a sanctuary. And we brought two brothers here from Guatemala, and Ruth was on the sanctuary committee. And, oh, you know, we found housing for them, and we worried about the international Internal Revenue Service and all of that. and. Ruth was the last member of that committee active. In fact, in some ways, she still is. I still see the daughter of one of the brothers at uh, River Valley Market. She's a uh, buyer now. And uh, we've sweated through the uh, Internal Revenue Service with them, with the legal problems. And I think everybody, except one whom I'm not sure of, finally got documents. It wasn't through the asylum application except for one. It was uh, a family, actually, or marriage. Um, and uh, that's just Ruth. It just stuck to that all the way through. When she was a individual for many years. She's not here today because she was just not feeling well. Not, you know, nothing serious, but she just wasn't feeling well. And I just realized I could not let this pass without paying tribute to her. I'm a little short, guys. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm Mariana. I've been working with AFSC since I was a senior at college. And it's kind of hard for my friends to think of it now, but when I first started working at AFSC, I had a very limited knowledge of politics. I remember feeling like I really need to insist to Jeff that like I didn't know anything um, when I when I first started. I was like, are you sure you want me? Like, I don't really know. Um, and he's like, well, do you want to learn? And I was like, okay, yeah. Um, and I think that's been true of a lot of the internship programs at AFSC. A lot of people have come in with some knowledge or no knowledge and have learned and grown a lot through the experience they've gotten in the internship program. I certainly did a lot when I was an intern and fellow at AFSC. I worked on the Preserving Our Civil Rights campaign uh, for a couple of years, I guess a couple of months, I don't know, over a year, <laughs> however long it went. Um, and I helped out with the newspaper um, before it became the declaration. I was one of the editors on it. I helped do research for AFSC. I, labored over random flyers and graphic design and like all the random stuff that interns and fellows do. Um, and most recently, I've been working on the social justice education pieces of AFSC um, through the Help and Peace the Peace project with Raul um, and um, another former intern, Myra and um, Aisha and Davi and a couple other pretty cool folks. And that's basically where my focus is right now is on social justice education and youth organizing. And it really couldn't have happened without AFSC. I've just learned and so grown so much, and I want to be able to bring that to other people. So, thanks, everybody. Okay, Francis, what's up? And she said, I was trying to distribute my leaflets downtown, downtown, and an officer came up to me and said, if I didn't have a permit, he was going to arrest me for distributing my leaflets. And what are you going to do about that? <laughs> 
and I saw Saturday and Sunday and all those nights in the office, I said, well, Francis, it's, uh, you think this could wait till Monday because it's kind of hard to rustle up a judge at noon on Saturday. And she said, no, I don't think so. I mean, I want to distribute my leaflets now. I said, OK, great. So I said, let me go to my office and think about this. And, and I did, and I uh, went to the office, and I called up the Northampton Police Department, and I asked to speak to the captain who was in charge of the ship, and got someone who I know. And I said, look, as you probably know, imposing restrictions on First Amendment rights for any period of time constitutes irreparable harm. And there was a woman on the streets of Northampton this morning who was distributing leaflets, and your officer told her that she was going to be arrested unless she had a permit. And I hope you well know she doesn't need a permit, and she has an absolute right to do that. And so we discussed this for a while, and the captain said, well, I know that. And then I explained how if we had to go to court, he would be responsible for attorney's fees, theirs and mine. And he said, that sounds bad. And I went on, I said, the woman is very upset. He said, that sounds bad. And I said, the woman is Francis Crow. He said, that's horrible. <laughs> So I said to the captain, uh, he said to me, do you know the officer's name? And I said, I don't. I didn't know if Francis did or not, but she wasn't there at the time. I said, I don't. He said, well, I, I have the schedule here. I can probably figure it out. Why don't you go tell Mrs. Crow that she can distribute her leaflets? And I said, fine. So I go back across the street. And Francis is there, and she begins distributing her leaflets again. So far, so good. I go back to the office because the uh, captain has said he'll call me back. The phone rings. I said, Captain Wall, yes it is. How are you? He said, I want you to tell Mrs. Crow something else. I said, what's that? He said, tell her that the officer's re-education has already begun. <laughs> <laughs> so I got up, went back across the street, and told Francis that the officer's re-education has already begun. So here's the take-home lesson. When you're distributing leaflets in Northampton, when you're out on your picket lines, when you're having a demonstration, Thank Francis. Yeah. <laughs> I remember first coming to AFSC in 1998. I followed an amazing woman named Anna Majessi. And Anna Majessi followed Francis, upon whose shoulders all of us stand, Francis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Anna um, and I learned from Francis those early years. And Anna was one of the people who started to help increase the peace project at, at National Priorities Project. I mean, at a I do this all the time, by the way. <laughs> at National Priorities Project, I say AFSC almost every day when I answer the phone or something. At AFSC, uh, Anna started help increase the peace. And Raul Mata, who's with us today, was one of the first young people trained through Help Increase the Peace. It was one of the most unbelievably important youth programs ever in the United States, I think, and we can thank Anna for bringing that to Western Massachusetts as a bold next step after our sister Frances. And then, of course, Doug and Maya did unbelievable work yes. uh, following yes. me, right? So this long line of wonderful, brave, good organizers. <coughs> On to Jeff. So I just wanted to say that the two most important uh, tenets under which I think the work of AFSC happens uh, are, for me are the faith in the worth of every human being and the belief of love as the transformative uh, power behind the, which we will transform injustice. Um, and those two pieces of work I think undergird us all and bring us together and certainly shaped my time at AFSC. Um, and I just want to share just a couple of memories um, I remember uh, sending 27 buses to New York City on February 15, 2003, and many of you made that happen. I remember a 24-hour vigil uh, that was the first in the nation to actually test National Priorities Project's cost of war numbers, and that vigil spurred vigils across the United States which then chronicled the cost, the local cost, to cities and towns of war it, at that point in Iraq right. um, and was and in and Afghanistan, and was one of the beginning oomphs behind National Priorities Project in terms of believing that the local cost of war numbers would be useful uh, pieces of organizing. 
And I remember Freedom in the Air, uh, which was a play that we all did um, to honor the life and work of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so many of you uh, from Mount Toby friends and Northampton friends were part of that. And I remember a pink slip action um, with friends from Arise and Jean Grossholtz and others where we all dressed up in pink slips and we, we spoke about our displeasure with the leadership in Congress. Um, and it was a bold and edgy and fun and irreverent and galvanizing action which was, I think, the role of AFSC and the role of Arise and Trap Rock and other wonderful institutions. And I, I want to just tell one story about a man named Bill Norris, uh, because Bill Norris's story is, I think, emblematic for me. So it was uh, September 13th, 2001, and I was walking downtown, and I had a big box of literature, which is, of course, AFSC's uh, job to bring literature and the speaker system and the tables. Um, and a man named Bill Norris stopped me on the street and he said, Joe Comerford, you're not calling me back. I want to be involved. And in fact, I probably wasn't returning Bill Norris's phone call because the phone at AFSC, and this is all of you, was ringing once a minute at that point. I'm not kidding. Um, and I couldn't answer it. No mortal could answer it. Um, and so actually Jim Levy came in and put in a phone system so that we could actually take calls. And Bill Norris was one of the people who tried to get through. And when I didn't pick up the phone, he caught me downtown and he said, I'll be in Monday morning. And I thought to myself at that point, OK, that's great. Um, you'll be in Monday morning. That's terrific, Bill. Thank you. Um, and I didn't actually believe at that point that Bill Norris would be in Monday morning. And Monday morning came, and he called, and he said, I actually can't come in today, but I'll be in tomorrow. And I remember thinking to myself, I am in a whole other world. And Bill Norris, and Bill Norris came in on Tuesday, and he stayed for years, um, <laughs> every single day, uh, along with Joe and Bessie and other people who at that point represented the volunteers coming into a a AFSC by droves. So the work that AFSC was doing um, was the work that you all were making happen, and I think that is for me one of the most precious gifts of the American Friends Service Committee, which is that it, it can be a catalyst for unbelievable communities like this one. <coughs> and since coming to National Priorities Project, I have had the great blessing of working with national AFSC, so Jeff's colleagues at the national level who hold him in very high regard for his great organizing. Um, and I will say that national AFSC is a beacon for all of us. And in the war um, effort, of course, AFSC was in a leadership position nationally, along with Peace Action and WAND uh, and others, Friends Committee on National Legislation, and certainly in this last resistance that we had to the military strike on Syria. NPP joined with all of these organizations nationally. And so I get to see from a different vantage point. We love AFSC Local and we love the legacy of Francis Crow every single day here in this valley. And I see the power of AFSC now nationally, thanks to this, mm. this most recent job I have. Um, and I'm just so blessed for both. Uh, so thanks to this program committee. Thanks to Jeff for your great continued organizing. And thanks to you all.